Hi everyone, it's Laura and I hope you're all really well. Today I'm going to be doing my January to March to be read TBR um, video. So what I'm planning on reading in the next few months. I know it's already kind of halfway through January, um, but I was away the first few weeks, so we've had to wait until now. I don't like to restrict my reading too much by doing a monthly TBR video, because even though it's a list that I'd make for myself, I always get stressed out. Um, but I do like doing this sort of every few months, um, because it gives my reading a bit of structure and also gives a bit of a this is what's coming up on my channel, so if you want to read along with any of these, I'll leave a link to all of them in the description box below. As you may know, I've been trying to go around my house and read all of the books that I have in the various bookshelves in different areas. Um, so, there's only one book from my previous TBR that I haven't read yet, so I'm feeling quite good about that, and that is The Beast Within by Emile Zola, and this was from my, I have a whole section of um, Penguin Pocket Classics, and I haven't read any of them because I'm a terrible person. So I, this is what I want to do, get through all the sets of books that I have. So this is the only one that I'm rolling over, and I think I've rolled this over a couple of times now, so I really, really had better read it. As well as my Pocket Classics, I also have a little pile of blue books. Um, in my living room and the one that I've picked from there is A Portable Shelter by Kirsty Logan. I'm not sure if this book really classifies as a little novella or a book of short stories and I think that's quite interesting. This is about two women who are having a baby and they both decided that they weren't going to tell the baby anything that isn't true so they said they're not going to tell it any stories although um, while the baby is, is growing they actually do tell it stories so the pregnant one tells the baby stories while the other one is at work and the other woman tells the baby stories when her partner is asleep. So it seems like a lovely mix of kind of the magical sort of, sort of fairy tale elements and then it's got short stories with a through narrative as well. Then from my shelf of white spined books, which is odd because it's actually got a black cover, is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Now I've not read any Shirley Jackson so I just thought, you know, it's about time, I really need to read it and this, I don't really understand this blurb, but it says this is about a woman and her sister, and her sister has just been acquitted from murdering the whole rest of the family, and there's other rumours or something going on in the house. I feel like a lot of her writing, I don't, I guess they're not short stories, maybe they're kind of novellas, do have this kind of element of darkness about them, because she also wrote The Lottery and The Haunting of Hill House. Um, so, although I know about her writing, I've never actually read it myself. From my Black Spine books, I've picked up Sight by Jessie Greengrass, and I haven't read any Jessie Greengrass before, although I do have her, I think it's a collection of short stories, um, on my shelf as well. But this one was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction last year, and it's about a woman who's going through pregnancy and her body changing, and she's kind of remembering, thinking about her mother. I don't know if it's about when her mother died or just about her mother's life, but it also sounds like it weaves in um, other themes of kind of medical history and specifically women's medical history, so looking at psychoanalysis and hysteria, concept of hysteria, um, and how pregnancy has been treated through the ages as well. I think, to a certain extent, um, well, I'll find out when I read it, won't I? I'm also trying to read through my little set of Persephone books, so from that group I picked up Tor Tory Heaven by Marganita Lasky, and the thing with Persephone is it, it's, it's very interesting, all of their books have these little dove grey covers, they have different um, end papers depending on when the book was originally written, most of their authors that they publish are women who have been kind of historically overlooked by the literary canon, but they don't really give you a blurb, so there is a, an excerpt of the book on here, um, but it's not a proper blurb, so I'm not sure what it's about, but this does sound like a kind of parody of, well, Tory, the Conservatives, um, like the right political party, um, and it sounds, you know, it sounded quite interesting considering what's going on in politics at the moment in this country. I'm also trying to read through my collection of Virginia Woolf books, and I have one more to read. I've been putting it off because it's the longest one, and that is The Years. Um, this is a really beautiful set that I got um, from Vintage. Um, vintage classics and all of her books have these have these really beautiful covers and it's really really gorgeous. Um, I am quite hit and miss with what I enjoy with Virginia Woolf. I like Miss Dalloway, I really like The Waves, um, I didn't like, like I read Orlando and To The Lighthouse Now which I thought were okay. Um, so we'll see, I mean apart from the fact it's written by Virginia Woolf, what do I know about it? Nothing. We're following the lives of a middle class family from 1880 to the 1930s so that, you know, that sounds quite interesting, it sounds a bit similar to The Lighthouse, um, but yeah, I'm quite pleased that this will be my last one and then I can say I've read all of her work, so that's quite good. I also have a shelf where I keep all of my kind of feminism slash gender studies kind of books and on a bit of a whim I've just picked up this one, which I think is quite funny, which is Why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism um, by Kirsten R. Godsey. This is a collection of different essays um, which was sent to me last year, it came out in November 
um, and this is a proof copy. But it sounds sort of a bit tongue in cheek, a bit funny. There were some other books that I was thinking of picking, but I think we might choose the one that I wanted to read for the Feminist Orchestra next year. So I need to, I can't remember what ones we had on our list now, but that will be coming out soon. We'll be announcing um, all of those books for 2019. So in the meantime, I will read this one. And now some more current books that I wanted to read just because I wanted to read them. So I'm currently about to start The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, which has just been, um, which just won the Costa First Book Award. Um, so it's up for the Book of the Year prize um, in a few weeks time. So I thought I would read it for that. And this sounds like a mix between maybe Cluedo and perhaps like Doctor Who or like sci-fi. Um, so I think it will be a bit love or hate, but I'm quite intrigued by it. And this woman, Evelyn Hardcastle is dying at this party um, and every day um, this guy wakes up in a, in a body of a different guest so he relives the same day and then has to work out who it is that's killing her um, so yeah sounds quite interesting sounds really different and unlike anything that I normally read I also fancied picking up again from the Costa shortlist but this is not from the first novel this is just from uh, from novel and that is from a low and quiet sea by Donald Ryan and the reason I'm intrigued by this is because it was um, long listed for the Man Booker Prize as well and I wasn't that fussed um, when it was long listed there but you, when things keep cropping up on prize lists sometimes you think yeah all right I'll give it a go it's not that long and this is about three different men from different walks of life who have each kind of suffered some kind of trauma so there's a guy from um, I was going to say Syria, it doesn't actually say Syria here, I know it does, so there's a guy from Syria, someone who's just had his heart broken and somebody else who is, is tormented by things in his past um, and they've all come together so yeah, alright, I'll give it a go. And finally, I'm really excited for this and I think I might read it first, even though I know I should read, I should read Emil Zola first, but after Emil Zola I think I'm going to pick up The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. Um, I read the first book in this series, The Bear and the Nightingale, um, last October and it was lovely. It was just, it's so wintry because it's set in Russia and it, it's very magical. It's like medieval Russia and so it's perfect to read during the winter time. I'm guessing this will be, I don't know if it's going to be similar, but a continuation of Vazia's story anyway. But I feel like January is a really good time to read it, especially because the next book in the series, the final book, I'm guessing, um, The Winter of the Witch. This has already come out now, so this is in shops, but um, I just happen to have a proof copy. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll give these a go. It's really nice to have a bit of escapism, a bit of fantasy, something like historical fantasy as well. Um, so yeah, I think these are gonna be good for combating the winter blues. So that's everything I've got coming up. You may have noticed a lot of the books I've picked, like this one and this one, are very short. <laughs> because I feel like I haven't read that much. I didn't read as many books as I normally read last year. So I think sometimes to get you back into that um, that rhythm and that routine of reading, you need a few short ones and to kind of get some books under your belt. That's how I feel anyway. So I thought for the beginning of the year, I'll start off with some short ones. It will make me feel like I'm making progress and getting through my massive backlog of books that I just have in my house. Um, so yeah, I would as always, love to hear from you if you read any of them already, um, because it's always great to have some recommendations from other people. Let me know what you're planning on reading at the beginning of this year, and if there's anything that you're particularly excited about coming out. I actually can't wait for Spring by Ali Smith to come out either, and I, I don't know when that is. I should probably look it up. Um, I feel like it will be earlier this month though. So let's have a chat in the comments, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!